This is News 4 at 6.30. Right now on News 4 at 6.30, a shocking report says the Buffalo VA hospital didn't do enough to save the life of one of its patients. How the VA is responding tonight. And snow has started to fill in on the radar this evening, and this view is going to get pretty old over the next several days. We're talking about a lot more snow coming up. And only with 6.30, Rochester school officials released new details about the day a young teen with autism went missing and died. What three teachers are accused of doing. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight at 6.30. I'm Christy Kern. And I'm Dave Graber. A winter storm warning is in effect for parts of western New York tonight. Many of you also woke up to some snow earlier this morning. As for other states along the east coast, they're dealing with blizzard conditions as the third nor'easter hits the coast in less than two weeks. In Buffalo, you can see things are pretty quiet right now, but more snow is on the way soon. Fort Worth meteorologist Kaylee Wentz has the details in your forecast first at 6.30. Kaylee. Good evening. We are talking about more snow, if you can believe it. I know spring is just a few days away, but a lot more snow is actually headed our way through not only tonight, but for the entirety of the day on Wednesday. At this point, the satellite and radar shows you that we're looking at that snow continuing to fill in. South of the city has been getting the worst of it this evening so far. Everywhere from really Springville further south, seeing some heavy bouts of snow. If you move further north, just a couple of flurries have impacted those regions. But again, it's south of the city at this point that are seeing some of those changes. Now, as we move through the night tonight, we're going to be seeing not only changes on the radar, but also changes on the roadways as that snow picks up. So that will change visibility. And we're already seeing some of that happening where the snow is strongest. Places like Olean and Wellsville down to below one mile visibility. And to put it into perspective, we like to see those numbers between about 10 and 12. That's normal. So we have seen visibility reductions are ready and just in time for these winter storm warnings. They began at 6 p.m. and they continue all the way through 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. And then we've got winter weather advisories as well that continue for that same time period. So coming up in my full foreign forecast, obviously each and every town in western New York will be seeing different snowfall accumulations on the ground. So we'll break that down for you. We'll let you know who will need to be using shovels and snow blowers and who can just use that quick snow brush tomorrow morning morning. Kaylee, thank you. A new report from the federal government says the Buffalo VA didn't do enough to keep a patient alive. The VA says the patient was found unresponsive in late 2016. The report places blame on several nurses. They say they thought the man was already dead and did not give CPR out of fear of breaking his ribs. They say hospital staff failed to tell the man's family that he was not given appropriate care. The spokesperson for the Buffalo VA told us tonight they will hold anyone accountable if they fail to live up to the VA standards. New tonight, a Buffalo man has admitted to shooting and killing another man on the Cattaraugus Indian Reservation. The shooting happened in October 2016. The Erie County District Attorney's Office says 23-year-old Daryl Bland pleaded guilty today to manslaughter. 31-year-old Dustin Sharp from Gowanda was killed. Bland faces a maximum of 25 years in prison. He'll be sentenced May 8th. We have new shocking details tonight about the death of a Rochester teen with autism. School officials now admit three teachers marked Trayvon Rowe present the day he went missing. Another admits to trying to alter attendance records to show he was there after he was reported missing. Rowe's body was found Sunday in the Genesee River. Police said last week he was last seen getting off a school bus but never made it inside. The president of Rochester City School Board says several teachers have been placed on leave as the district investigates. New documents claim Erie County knew about sexual harassment claims against former Commissioner of Social Services Al Dershberger. Dershberger faces rape and criminal sexual assault charges. He's accused of assaulting a county employee during a business trip in Albany. A notice of claim says county leaders knew about Dershberger's actions and did nothing to protect her. Dershberger has pleaded not guilty but resigned late last year. A county spokesperson says no one in Erie County government knew anything about any claims against him. After eight days of deliberations, the verdict is in. Joseph Percoco has been found guilty of conspiracy and solicitation of bribes. Just yesterday, jurors said they didn't think they could reach a verdict, saying they were deadlocked. Today, they asked the judge if they could find Percoco guilty on some charges. This means he was found not guilty on top charges like extortion. 
Prosecutors say Prococo accepted more than $300,000 in bribes. I am thankful to my wonderful legal team, uh, and I'm thankful to my family and friends that have stood by me through this entire process, and I look forward to them all standing by me as we go forward. Percoco's attorney says he'll look at other options to further review the case. Percoco is set to be sentenced June 11th. Coming up at 643, political analyst Kevin Hardwick joins us live on set to explain what exactly the charges mean. A shocking announcement from a national law firm revealed 13 priests credibly accused of sexual abuse are serving in the Diocese of Buffalo. A lawyer from the firm Jeff Anderson and Associates and a former priest from Minnesota released the priest's name earlier today. An attorney represents survivors of sexual abuse by those in the Catholic Diocese. Their announcement comes after Buffalo Bishop Richard Malone announced financial settlements for those who have reported sexual abuse against Buffalo priests. The attorney says while this is a right step forward, he says Bishop Malone isn't doing any justice by protecting the names of those priests. The release of the identities and whereabouts of known offenders protects children today and children tomorrow simply because the mistakes of yesterday by this diocese cannot be effectively changed and corrected without disclosure of what went wrong. Officials with the Buffalo Diocese have admitted there are at least 50 priests accused of sexual abuse. Rex says if the diocese doesn't release their names, they could sue to force the issue. A Dansville man has pleaded guilty to forcibly raping a 15-year-old girl in Wyoming County. 38-year-old Lance Riley from Dansville admitted in court Friday to strangling and raping the girl. The district attorney made the announcement today. The DA says for months the victim was taunted by members of Riley's family using a Facebook page to try to prove his innocence. Riley faces a minimum of 10 years in prison. He'll be sentenced April 12th. Tomorrow marks one month since the deadly shooting in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in South Florida. 17 people were killed after a former student opened fire with an AR-15 style rifle. Following the shooting, many have turned their grief into activism, calling for changes to current gun laws. That will be the motive behind a nationwide school walkout. Now, the walkout is happening at 10 a.m. tomorrow and will last for exactly 17 minutes to remember the 17 people killed. Seven, er, several schools excuse me, in western New York are allowing their students to take part in the national movement. Students are demanding lawmakers ban assault weapons, require universal background checks before gun sales, and pass a gun violence restraining order law. It would allow courts to disarm people who display warning signs of violent behavior. Advocates and members of the Buffalo Parent Teacher Organization say they're proud of the students for striving for change. Time, their moment, their opportunity to lead, to teach, to inspire, to learn, to shape their futures and to influence change in policy and changes in our schools and communities. We'll have full coverage tomorrow of the walkouts happening in our area on air and online at WIVB.com. Still to come on News 4 at 6.30, as we just told you, verdict is reached in the Joseph Prococo trial. Political analyst Kevin Hardwick will join us live on set to break down the charges and their political fallout. And there is so much to talk about in the Weather Center tonight. We're obviously tracking the incoming snow, but we're also talking about the nor'easter on the East Coast. All of that and more is just ahead.